Hey, this is Dr. John with The Healthy MD, and today we're, what we're going to do is talk about autophagy and loose skin, or how intermittent fasting can increase autophagy and help with that loose skin. And this really goes out to those folks that have done the, the hard work, they finally lost those extra pounds, they may have had a pretty significant amount of weight loss, and now they're left with a lot of this loose hanging skin, maybe like underneath their arms, um, around their stomach that just doesn't seem to go away. And I see patients in the clinic with this, and it's one of these things that can be really distressing after you've uh, gone through the hard work as far as losing that weight. And you really can develop almost anywhere, too. You can develop around the, not only around the abdomen, but you may see it around the thighs, uh, buttocks, and, and other areas, too. And it's really the stubborn, loose skin that, that people are really frustrated with. It can really affect self-esteem. Um, one of the most common ways that people handle this is to go off to the plastic surgeon and they have surgery for this. And while that's definitely an option for some folks, there may be other folks that are looking for a different way or more natural way other than surgery uh, to take care of that loose skin. So what I want to do today is just talk about some of the scientific uh, research out there that talks about autophagy or fasting for helping with, with the loose skin after weight loss or during weight loss and how do you actually prevent that loose skin from developing. And one of the things that I want to talk about is how fasting and autophagy can actually help that skin stay elastic. Because that's really what the issue is, is that skin loses its elasticity during the weight loss. And that's why it'll kind of hang down. You'll see it kind of, you know, hang down like what uh, women will call like those bat wings that they get um, after it. Or what we'll see around the abdomen as well, too. So... Just a, a quick review uh, or a quick thing to point out. It just, you know, I think people have a, a mis, misconception about how this all works, how fasting and autophagy can actually work. It doesn't literally eat up the loose skin. It actually helps your body become, um, help that skin become more elastic. So let's just kind of jump on in and kind of talk about, a, a, you know, a little bit of a definition. What is autophagy? Okay, and autophagy is actually a Greek word. Uh, so the first part is auto, self, and phagy, which is for eating. So essentially self-eating is what autophagy means. And so it's really where, for lack of a better term, the body really starts to eat, eat itself or, or reuse parts of itself. So what's really happening, it's more of a recycling uh, process that's happening. And it's pretty interesting because this research is, is relatively new um, in medicine. So probably since just the 1960s. And so how do we induce autophagy? Really, it's by the absence of external food. So in other words, by fasting for several hours. And there's antidotal studies that go back even to like the 1920s and 1930s where they used to do these uh, locked ward fasting um, studies, which, you know, we can't do nowadays just because of ethical uh, standards. And they would have uh, their research subjects lose 100 pounds, 120 pounds, and come out of there with no loose skin. So really interesting that if you do these long, prolonged um, fastings, and we're talking you know, three months, six months, and, and in one case, even upwards of a year, um, and the test subjects didn't have any of the loose skin afterwards. So the thought being that this autophagy or this recycling of the, of the cells can help as far as that loose skin. So the other thing, obviously, is make sure that before you start this, you check with your doctor, okay? And that's pretty much going to be, you know, similar to anything else that you're going to hear on from me is, you know, I'm not your doctor. Uh, this is general information, uh, not specific medical advice. So, you know, learn a little bit, but then also talk to your doctor about it. See if this is right for you with your specific medical issues. Um, and so that kind of goes without saying. But let's talk a little bit about what the research is out there, uh, at least on autophagy and, and fasting and, and weight loss and, and on loose skin. So again, what I said before, you know, these studies on autophagy really started back in the 1960s with some of the Belgian um, scientists and actually was, uh, uh, that's where the term autophagy really came from. And it's really progressed pretty rapidly where, you know, in, in 2016, a Japanese biologist, uh, Yoshinori, um Osumi won the actual Nobel Prize in physiology for his work in, in autophagy. And while his research really looked at yeast cells and how they promoted autophagy, he was also able to show how that could apply to human, uh, human cells as well, too. So that's a pretty rapid advancement in this field over, what, 50 years um, or less than 50 years. Uh, 
so where the you know, Nobel Prize has been awarded for this for this research. Um, another way to think about autophagy is also more like a, a housekeeping or cellular housekeeping, kind of cleaning up, or maybe even like a quality control. Uh, autophagy is really designed to gradually reduce damage that happens in the cells because as we age and as those cells age, there is debris and there's damage that happens that needs to get cleaned up. And the more damage that doesn't get cleaned up, it's just like if you don't clean up your house, you get more and more um, stuff and trash that builds up and builds up and all of a sudden soon you're a hoarder that you, know, you just can't function. You can't walk around the house. Well, your cells are the same way and they become less efficient. Um, they can't process and do the, the job they're supposed to do. Um, but it's re really interesting some of the research that's coming out on this uh, on autophagy now. So now we're looking even at some of these neurodegenerative diseases. So if we're talking about Alzheimer's or maybe Parkinson's disease, that there's some research that suggests that maybe autophagy can actually slow down those diseases. And maybe that's one of the focuses that we need to, to look at uh, with Parkinson's or Alzheimer's is how do we induce um, a greater amount of autophagy to have the cells really clean themselves up. And that's one of the reasons why there may be a benefit to caloric restriction in, in Alzheimer's patients and Parkinson's patients as well, too, is because of this induction of autophagy. Uh, really interesting stuff. And that's also, I think, where low-carb or ketogenic diets have a role to play as well, too. Now, there's also some studies out there that look at autophagy and fasting with depression and schizophrenia. So all across the board as far as neurodegenerative diseases and some of these psychiatric diseases. Now, autophagy and fasting has also been shown to help with increased energy. So if you've talked to folks or if you've done an uh, extended fast yourself, that's one of the things that typically people will talk about is once they get to about 24 hours, there's kind of this break point where they're almost like euphoric and they just have this um, added energy. Like It's literally like having three or four cups of coffee, but obviously uh, without the caffeine. Um, and it's interesting how, you know, is that, due to ketone levels? Is it due to autophagy? What is it? Um, you know, research is, is really ongoing, but there's also probably some benefit to the immune system. So folks with autoimmune diseases, um, you know, are holding out hope that some of the uh, future research on autophagy and fasting will, will show that maybe that's a treatment or a potential future treatment um, for these autoimmune diseases too. So the one thing that we don't know is how does how often or what, when does autophagy actually happen in the body? And it's really tough to track in, in humans. Uh, there's research looking at mice and, and uh, other animal studies, but it's hard to kind of apply that to humans. So, but there are a couple studies out there that I found that talk about autophagy and loose skin. Uh, so there was a 19, or excuse me, a, a 2014 study that was done in Japan that looked at aging fibroblasts. Or, uh, and these are cells that are responsible for connective tissue in the body. And these connective, these fibroblasts produce collagen, which actually gives skin its elasticity or kind of that, you know, allows the, the skin to kind of have that snap back into place. So aging fibroblasts can't make that collagen as well. The skin suffers from a lack of, of that elasticity. And that's where you start getting that hanging skin or that loose skin. So what they showed in these aging fibroblasts is that over time that they, these aging fibroblasts essentially got clogged up. So kind of waste products and broken parts and um, really impacted the fibroblast ability to function as far as producing collagen. So one of the conclusions from this Japanese study was that the slowdown of, of autophagy as we age leads to that deterioration of the dermal integrity and skin fragility uh, that we see as we age. So is that something where we need to look at as far as how to keep inducing a certain level of autophagy as we age to keep that skin, keep those fibroblasts functioning to help out with the skin integrity? So there was also a, another study done in um, 2018. This one was actually out of out of Korea that looked at, and this Korean study looked at, uh, also looked at autophagy and loose skin as well too. So these um, scientists in Korea looked at dermal fibroblasts using a um, transmission electron microscope, which is one of these really powerful microscopes where you can pretty much blow things up um, or magnify things up to about 2 million times. So really look at the cellular level. So they were actually able to look at these fibroblasts um, under autophagy or under um, laboratory uh, conditions. And especially these aging fibroblasts found that these aging fibroblasts had more debris, had more waste products uh, produced because they didn't have the autophagosomes to uh, clean things up. So it's almost like, you know, if you, you know, keep putting out your recycling um, 
container on Wednesdays whenever it's it's garbage day, but there's not enough uh, recycling trucks to go around and your recycling is just going to sit there and build up and build up until the recycling truck can, can get there. So again, it's kind of that build up of waste products and not having enough um, of these specialized cells to break them down and, and really recycle all the products. So there's a big difference that the Korean researchers found between the older fiberglass and the younger fiberglass as far as how quickly they're able to recycle um, that cellular debris. And it's this inability of the fiberglass to kind of keep up with and get rid of that extra weight waste product that probably results in the skin aging. And that leads to the wrinkles, it leads to the loose skin, uh, everything else that we kind of associate with aging. Uh, so just to kind of you know summarize it, these two studies really looked at a couple things. One, we know that fiberglass make collagen and collagen uh, prevents loose sagging skin. We also looked at these studies and it looks like that autophagy helps these cells, especially uh, specifically these fibroblast cells, keep themselves clean and healthy. And that aging fibroblasts suffer from increased waste production and less autophagy. So when this happens, the fibroblasts, these older fibroblasts can't produce the collagen we need to keep the skin elastic. And then it's that lack of collagen in turn that leads to the um, aging and sagging skin. So the thought is by increasing autophagy, that we can clean up these fibroblasts and make them produce collagen again. And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. And these studies then developed, um, you know, you know, their hypothesis that that's really the link is that autophagy can help with the loose skin. Great. So how do we induce autophagy in our own body? Is there a pill you can take? Is there a magic wand you can wave? Well, it's actually a little bit simpler than that. So. And really what we're talking about or what the next, I think the next research is looking at is, you know, does increase autophagy then get rid of the, the loose skin? And it's interesting because there are literature reviews out there. There was one that's published in 2018 that looked at this and found that fasting caloric restriction to be one of the most uh, potent non-genetic autophagy stimulators. And that was also um, really no side effects with it. So something to think about as far as, you know, future research for autophagy in this loose skin. And so how do we induce autophagy? So if we look at the studies in mice, decreasing calories by about 40% from normal induces autophagy. So caloric restriction is one way to do it. Fasting is also another way to do it as well too. But we don't really have the, the right parameters yet for humans. So we know that in mice, autophagy begins in about 24 hours of fasting. But we don't know what that time uh, limit is for humans yet. But some experts will say about 16 hours. Uh, I think more of them will say around 24 hours, similar to the, uh, to the mice. Uh, but we don't know if you need to go longer for that as well too, or how often um, you need to do uh, the fasting to induce autophagy. If you follow uh, Dr. Jason Fung, who is a Canadian nephrologist and really one of the, the docs who's really kind of jumped into intermittent fasting uh, with both feet, um, you're right at the beginning and, and someone who's, I've looked at a lot of his stuff and really respect, you know, he believes that autophagy sets in at about the 24 hour point and that really probably you max out or you get the maximum benefits around you know, 32, 36 hours. So you don't need to do these two, three, four day fast necessary to, to get the, the big benefits from autophagy. Uh, and probably something that's probably more attainable for most folks is doing that 24 hour fast rather than trying to go two, three, four, five day fast. And I think, you know, I think there's some issues if you really try to fast for that length of time uh, and how often you're trying to do it. So I definitely, you know, don't take this as a re recommendation to be doing, you know, multiple day fasts um, frequently to do autophagy. Um, and the interesting thing is when you do these fasts, the body actually has to turn in on itself and look, okay, what can we recycle? And it starts looking at, you know, all these other cells that have the, all this waste and debris built up in them. And that's where the autophagy probably kicks in. So it's interesting to kind of see that that may be the, the kind of sweet spot that we need to look at. So fasting definitely leads to autophagy, which then again, we think or potentially can lead to that tighter, healthier skin as those fibroblasts, a uh, little tongue twister there, as those fibroblasts start to produce more collagen, okay? So again, how long do you, should you fast for? One, number one, talk with your doctor. 
okay? But in general, probably somewhere between 24 to 36 hours, um, that is probably, again, about the sweet spot with that. But you need to also be careful of some other things because there's some downsides with too much fasting. And especially if you have a history of eating disorders, whether it's anorexia or bulimia, uh, then really, you know, you need to really talk to your talk to your medical team about whether or not fasting is, is right for you. Um, the last thing we want to have happen is for you to tip back into, into anorexia. So you really have to tread cautiously if you have a history of eating disorders and using um, intermittent uh, fasting. Uh, but there are other ways to promote uh, autophagy, which is good news. So fasting is only going to be one of the ways to do that. Another way to do that is also exercise. And there are a couple of different types of exercise. I think you've heard me talk about it quite a bit on this channel. Uh, not a huge cardio fan, but endurance exercise can definitely induce some autophagy. Resistance exercise, so weight list, lifting. And again, if you follow me for any bit of time, I'm a bigger fan of lifting weights and uh, resistant exercise than I am of, of cardio. doesn't mean that you can't do cardio. I just think that your primary focus needs to be on lifting things and getting stronger and building up that lean muscle mass. Um, but that's one of the things really to look at because as you start uh, you know, doing that resistance exercise, there's a breakdown of muscle protein. There's kind of a cleanup system that has to happen. And then there are thoughts, there's some research are suggesting that if you combine that resistance exercise with um, intermittent fasting, that you can actually really promote uh, more autophagy throughout the body, which can be, again, hopefully a healthy uh, thing, especially if you're trying to get rid of that loose skin. So. So diet, exercise are probably the two key things for inducing autophagy, which again will clean up those fibroblasts and then help with that loose skin. This doesn't work for everybody, so it's not a panacea. It's not going to you know, melt off the, the skin, if, especially if you've lost you know, 100, 150 pounds, but it may help. Okay. So again, talk to your doctor about this uh, before you start any type of fasting uh, program, even if it's intermittent fasting. Okay. Make sure they're on board, um, especially if you're going through weight loss and you're on medications, your medication um, doses may change as you're losing the weight loss. So your doctor really needs to be on board and really kind of monitoring you know, how quickly or when they need to adjust those medicines. Um, and you, but hopefully this has been helpful. So if you have questions, uh, type them down in the comment box, uh, read through the article. It'll have links to the research as well too uh, that kind of talks about what I've talked about in this video. Again, I'm Dr. John Martinez from The Healthy MD. Glad to be here. And two other requests, please hit the like button and subscribe so you know when we have other videos coming out. Thanks again and stay healthy.